So for the Decentralized Futures program, one of the requirements is actually that whatever projects they're applying for, they should become self-sustaining, uh, I mean, financial sustainable project in the long term. So it's actually valid and where we accept applications. Polkadot Insider is happy to have Saraya. He's from Wefri Foundation. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so uh, we are at the PBA. Yep. So uh, how do you feel in general right now? Uh, how, how's the PBA for you so far? Uh, yeah, very good so far. So I've been contributing to mentoring the students for the pitch assignment. And uh, yeah, we just finished the finals right now for the pitches. It was quite interesting and good to see how the students uh, progressed from when uh, we initially talked to them uh, to now on stage. It was a good experience, I think. So you were the mentor or the instructor here? At no, I was just one of the mentors, yeah. Okay. So also I think you talked to Rada as well. Yes. So I he did. was also a mentor and, and also Josh. So were there like a lot of exciting projects that, you know, you might, like Wefri might be interested in? So I have talked to, I think, 10 projects. Okay. In the first stage, Polkabase, I'm not sure if you talked to them, Polkabase has done kind of a, the first stage where they filter the teams already and they reduced the number of teams to 10. So for us, we already had a, a good selection of like the 10 best teams. Right? Already been filtered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of these teams uh, already good? Uh, yeah, have okay, been good. Okay. Yeah. So on just a fun question, like on a scale from one to 10, how exciting it can be like for all the projects here? Show me for, some excitement. For, for me or for yeah. them? Uh, for, for you personally. Oh, okay. From one to 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 11, of course. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> that, that, that's a good amount. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go back to our talk today. It's about sure. uh, Web3 Foundation, right? And obviously, we want to know, first of all, you about you. So yeah. um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey to Web3. Okay, yeah. So I have mostly a software developer background. Who are the, like, the builders? Yourself? You were a builder yourself? Yeah, right. Before I was in, in uh, Web3, I was in Web2 okay. and uh, traditional software development. Why the switching? I was always interested in, I mean, since 2017, okay. when Bitcoin catch my interest, I was really interested to, to do the shift to Web3. Also, I participated in the Polkadot ICO in 2017 already when the time was right. So that was 2018 first, I, I switched to Web3. But during the bear market, the startup that I was working for uh, it was a bit troublesome due to the market conditions. And then I decided to go uh, back to more traditional industries. So, I so went there was to like banking. a period, you come back to Web2 and right, then right. you switch again. So okay. then I went to, in 2019, I went to Web2 and then two years later, I came back to Web3. So now I have been with Web3 Foundation for more than two and a half years. Yeah. Okay, okay. Not, not too long, not too short. Yeah. Okay. So how about... Web3 Foundation, let's talk about it. Can you walk us through the foundation and also um, what are there, what are you guys offering for projects? Yeah, I think it's one of the key players in the, especially Polkadot ecosystem, but also in the broader uh, Web3 ecosystem. So uh, as you may know, uh, Gavin Wood, he, he coined the, the term Web3, right? As a vision for a more decentralized and, and trustless and uh, inclusive version of the web. So that's why he created the Web3 Foundation, which was also the entity that was used for the uh, DOT fundraise in 2017. So the ICO was organized and orchestrated by the Web3 Foundation. They bootstrapped the whole, the whole ecosystem basically for Polkadot. And nowadays what we do is we focus on research. So mostly the core research for that is Polkadot relevant comes from Web3 Foundation. And we also focus on brands, so this is where, where I work. And so you normally would go to like academies like PBA to look for uh, projects anywhere else that any other sources that you gotta uh, use to to find projects. So the question is if we have other sources than the PBA to yeah, find yeah. projects, right? Yeah, yeah a, a variety. Uh, so of course, online, like social media and uh, other marketing streams. Of course, we have blogs, web page. We go to conferences and 
talk about our funding programs and what, what Polkadot has to offer. Mm -hmm. Of course, we also have our, our own networks. I shouldn't say convince other people to come to Polkadot because only if it makes sense, of course, right? Okay. So it might not be the right for every use case, but of course, if it makes sense, if we see a good match for a Web2 project or a project that is already on Web and would be better suited maybe on Polkadot, then yeah. Those and, are some uh, things that what, we do. Uh, are like the specific programs, right? I believe that you have like different programs for the for the funding, right? So, uh, what are you guys offering to projects? What what types of programs? So, what type of funding programs, yeah. right? So, we have been offering the Web three foundation. Wait, let, let me start over with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I believe there's like <laughs> different types, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically we have two programs right now. Two programs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So one of them is the, let's say, classical grants program that has been around for many years already. There is the Decentralized Futures program. That one's the recent one. That one recently launched. And this one is actually has a, a limited time frame where it's actually okay. valid and where we accept applications. Should I talk about the two programs Definitely, a bit? Definitely, Okay, yeah. so for the first one, for the grants program, this one focuses exclusively exclusively on tech we don't focus any any bd or marketing efforts and it has to be open source for that one right and it's very open transparent everything is on github so if needed and at a later stage we could also run this fully on chain because everything is already so transparent right so it's very easy to to bring it on chain when compared to a, a more let's say secretive or confidential program then the other program the Decentralized Futures program has a much broader scope. So we focus on pretty much anything, or we are interested in pretty much anything that can bring value to the ecosystem. Can you give like examples for it? Yeah. Yeah, so mostly we have been signing brands in, in business development and in marketing okay. and in, in uh, community building efforts. Like to raise more to like with the mass adoption is, is it like it's heading towards the the, the mass the mass more because i do believe that the first one the classic one only for depth right so only yeah. for uh yeah. if, if a developer has a good idea right then submit it and then yeah. you grant uh, you grant the fund and for the decentralized future if more than that it would be does it have to be like a developer has an idea and then he has like his whole crew and then it will become like more of an investment? Does it have to be like that way? So for the Decentralized Futures program, one of the requirements is actually that whatever projects they're applying for, they should become self-sustaining, uh, I mean, financial sustainable project in the long term. So we give them one year of runway, up to one year of runway. Uh, but they already need to have a plan ready when mm -hmm. they apply for the funds. They already need to have a plan ready for how they're planning to become self-sufficient in the future, right? And some people will go to VCs or maybe they already have a work, some working revenue streams that can make them a profit. Or they may go to OpenGov, so to the Treasury, or maybe to Polymac, you know. So there are different yeah, ways to, to become financially self-sustaining. How big is the fund and like how is it used already? Yeah, for the Decentralized Futures program, up to $20 million in fiat okay. available and up to $5 million in DOT, in uh, vested DOT. The DOT, right? Yeah. A large portion of the fiat there actually already has been spent. Okay, so like how... Um Two-thirds. Yeah, more than two-thirds. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the exact number in my mind, but I think... We got the quantity, like the amount of it, that's it. We got the imagine of it. Yeah. That, that'll be okay. The ratio. So, yeah, we, we already signed around $25 million in total. Okay. In both. So, you know, in, in fiat and in DOT. Okay, in both. Yeah. For the DOT portion, we still have some uh, capacity. For the fiat portion, yeah, the capacity is becoming smaller and smaller. And we have seen a huge interest of projects that, that seek funding. So that exceeded the budget that we actually have by many times. So obviously we cannot fund all the projects, even though a lot of them are good. We had to turn down even some of the good ones, you know? I see. Yeah. I see. yeah. So it, it's becoming very competitive. The approval rate is actually around 15% right now. So Which it's becoming a competitive, competitive. Yeah. space. But I think it's a good problem to have because it shows that there are a lot of teams out there that are interested in delivering value to the ecosystem. 
So if in the future we can find other sources of funds, and this could also be like external investors, VCs, right? Then I think we, we can... We'll be good. Yeah, it, yeah, we can make the ecosystem grow. I think it's good quicker. that we highlight that all the projects should have criteria. And then uh, we've, we've seen that the funding is, you know, is deducted, which is actually a good sign, which means there's like more project, like there's good projects to actually, we, for, for us to, to fund, to, to grant. Right. Yeah, so apart from maybe like a whole uh, plan, like marketing plan and financial plan, that's like the basic cri criteria. Are there any specific, like special criteria that would make the project stand out that you would pick, that you guys would pick compared to the others? Okay, so actually, just to be clear, as part, uh, I'm part of the grant team and what we do is we do a pre-screening and editorial for, for all incoming applications in the Decentralized Futures program, but we actually don't decide on, on what to get funded and what, what not. So the committee will actually decide on that and all of us, we are not in the committee. Mm -hmm. it, it's right? all so, like, because it's an open source, I understand that. I should be more clear. It's a bit confusing because okay. we have these two programs and okay. and uh, they have very different rules. Okay. So for the grants program, all the grantee members are actually in the grants committee along with some ecosystem people as well. But for the DF program, we are only doing the review, uh, pre-screening, editorials, you know. We don't actually do the final decision on what should get funded and what not. But I think patterns that I have seen, so because your question I think is what should teams focus on, right? Yeah. So I think they should focus on how they will deliver value to who exactly. Of course it has to be the eco ecosystem, but like which part of the ecosystem, right? Do, do they bring users? Do they bring adoption? Do they bring additional tooling for developers or, or maybe for retail users? Do they bring funds? from investors, for example, when it when it comes to BD proposals, right? The potential. Right, so who are you delivering what value to and in what form? And then uh, once you describe that as an applicant, you will have to break it down into milestones and into discrete deliverables that we are actually able to evaluate. So we usually don't do upfront payments. When we sign a grant, then we expect the team to deliver first and then Period. they will get their, yeah and then they will get the payout. But for that, there needs to be some kind of specification so we know what to evaluate and how to evaluate it, right? And that they figure it out by themselves, right? Or you will like give them like a scale for, for them to actually follow it? No, that, that's up to the applicant. Mm -hmm. So they will have to make a suggestion and then we make the decision whether or not we think this would be reasonable, you know? Yeah. For all the projects, like I mean, as a mentor, like through what you're seeing, are there any common, you know, downside of the projects that might be, you know, a bump down for for them? You mean like some common traps they walk into? Yeah, something probably. like or that. Weaknesses. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in some of my previous talks, um, I said that it's it's important uh, to see some activity on the Polkadot forum post that is also required for for applying. Mm -hmm to the Decentralized Futures program. And uh, I noticed that, that some projects or some teams have actually seemingly created fake conversations, you know, like, yeah, fake comments that I see, tries I see. to hype up the project with a lot of very new profiles that have no posts whatsoever. So kind of like some bots, right? So you're gonna track like that? Mm, I mean, we, do, we don't track them by IP or, or something like that. I mean, it's, when it's we quite see, obvious, When we see, yeah, in some cases, it's just very obvious. If, if you see 10 comments that says almost the same thing and seemingly maybe it's generated by ChatGPT from how it's phrased, right? Then, yeah, it's just a little bit suspicious. So, so that's, that's probably, uh, probably in that case, it's better to have no engagement at all than, than fake engagement. And I think that, that goes back to, to my next, or uh, that leads me to the next point. So some applicants, unfortunately, have been, mm, no, that's too negative. <laughs> you can go negative, we can, we can cut it. <laughs> Wait, let me think how to phrase this. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, you can so, tell me, I, I can. Okay, I will I'll redo it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that actually leads me to the next point. So I would recommend teams to be honest and transparent about their engagements in the in the past, and for example, also where they have received funding or where they have you know adding value. Because 
or, or where they have seeking funds for because just to give you an example some teams they submit very generic applications that will match to any web3 funding program right so not very tailored to polkadot and then also a bit obvious that They've these kind of yeah they're, they're, they're just everywhere. hopping from funding program to funding program but they don't have actually any interest in adding value to polkadot understood, probably understood. right they and should customize it through like based on the characteristic of the ecosystem as well. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not worth yeah, exactly. And basically, yeah. don't go uh, sarcastic with everything that you're applying for, right? Yeah, but but I think we have developed over the years uh, quite a good sense on what teams are actually enthusiastic mm -hmm. on on the ecosystem and which teams I mean not what which particular teams but from or when going through an, an application we can kind of feel what their intention is in a way and if we cannot then we're gonna do some due diligence and then we will figure it out usually if there's some suspicious things going on yeah so I, I think usually we kind of figure it out when there is something fishy going on yeah. It's like when you're grading, like you can use technology for something, but there always be like some sense you need to to evaluate, you know, like a person or like a project. I understand? Correct. So yeah. let's wrap this up with you know a fun question. There is um, not not too fun though. But, <laughs> okay, um, okay. How do you see uh, all the projects like that with the amount of projects? Uh, going right now and looking forward to the future, uh, how do you think that Web3 would go, you know, would progress within three to five more years? Oh, that's yeah. very you, difficult maybe, to... <laughs> maybe through your perspective, like yeah. how do you want it to grow to your expectation? It's interesting because like all the, uh, like every interview that I had, they, they answer different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the kind of question that you will answer and you will make some kind of prediction, right, about the future. <laughs> you, you don't and have to. Historically, <laughs> humans are very bad in making predictions. So then people will go back in time and take your video and tell you, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we he promise said that, that we're not going to do that with yours. <laughs> Maybe someone else, but not us. I said I won't do that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very difficult to predict the future, I think. Yeah, my hope would be, at least my hope would be, that we can make Web3 actually useful to the common user and not just to some, you know, to some DJs that want to make a quick buck by aping into a token, but that we actually deliver true value and have adoption, mainstream adoption. Yeah, that would be my hope. What would make it, you know, go go down, like downside? What's the downsides? Yeah, there's so many factors. Tell me, uh, can you give me one or two at least? <laughs> <laughs> Am I making this harder? <laughs> I think when it comes to our ecosystem, we have to make a better job in developer experience because we have a very steep learning curve and also user experience. Because I have friends that are even experienced in Web3 but in other, other ecosystems and sometimes they they don't even understand how to use one of the most popular dApps in our ecosystem. So just to give you an example, currently ecosystem is very fragmented, right? Our ecosystem is very fragmented because we have all these parachains that's and we do have XCM and I think that's beautiful and I think that's great for scaling. From a UX perspective, it's very difficult to understand. So when you withdraw a dot from the exchange to your sub wallet, for example, and then you want to send it to a DEX to exchange it to some other token, you will have to go through all these XCM channels, right? You will have, have to teleport your assets. So that's a, one concept that is, is completely new to most users, right? Especially for end users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So until you would reach your goal, a lot of people actually give up before that, I think. And I think this is one of the things that we have to fix in our ecosystem. We have to create better tooling and maybe also better core tooling. And I think also Jam should help with that. We've heard of it. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, awaiting, especially after today, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, let's see. It's been great chatting with you. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'll see you in uh, maybe the next interview. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you so you. much.